This is one of multiple videos discussing OSPF DR and BDR, or Designated Router and Backup Designated Router Elections and Selection Criteria. On Cisco, we have this document that says that DRs and BDR elections are done via the Hello protocol. Hello packets are exchanged via multicast packets on each segment. The router with the highest priority on a segment will become the DR for that segment. The process is repeated for the BDR. In the case of a tie, the router with the highest router ID will win. The default priority on an interface is one. If you set the priority to a zero, it means the router will not become a DR or a BDR. Remember that the DR and BDR concepts are per multi-access segment. Setting the OSPF priority on an interface can be done using the IP OSPF priority command. Now let's look at this segment that has router three, router two, router one, and router four connected to it. On this segment, router one has neighbor relationships to router two, router three, and router four. Note to the interface, gigabit zero. The stop entry is for this segment on gigabit zero one, but we are concentrating on gigabit zero zero for the moment. So we don't see a DR. Show IP OSPF interface brief. What we do see is that the local router, router one, is the designated router. Now that goes against what we've just read. The router ID of this router is lower than the other routers on the segment. And this is where real world comes into play versus theory. The reason why router one was elected as the designated router is that in the previous video, I configured router one first before I configured the other routers. So router one was the only router on the segment. It was waiting for other routers, none appeared, so it became the DR. When the other routers were added to the segment, and I added them in the order of router two, then router three, then router four, router one was already the designated router. Once a designated router is elected, and a router comes onto the segment with a higher priority or higher router ID, it's not gonna usurp or preempt the designated router. The designated router remains the designated router. And hence, the local router with a lower router ID, which we can see by using the command show IP OSPF interface, is elected as the DR on gigabit zero zero because it came online first. Notice it has an adjacency or neighbor relationship with three routers. Router two is the backup designator router, router three and router four are DR others. Show IP OSPF and neighbor. Router two is a BDR, router three, router four are DR others on gigabit zero zero. So what happens if we go on to gigabit zero zero and we type IP OSPF priority zero. Show IP OSPF interface. What you'll notice is the router state on gigabit zero zero has changed to DR other. It's now formed a full relationship to router two. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Router one has a full relationship to router two as well as router four. The reason why router two became the DR is it was already the BDR. And then out of router three and router four, router four became the BDR because it had a higher router ID. So the theory is as follows. Router with the highest priority becomes designated router on a segment. That's not entirely true. If one router comes onto the segment first before other routers, that router will be the designated router. But if they all come online at the same time, it's based on highest priority, then highest router ID, then highest loopback interface IP address, then highest configured 
physical interface address. And in this case, router 4 became the backup designated router because it had the highest IP address. So what I'm gonna do now is reboot the switch so that you can see the full process of how the exam explains how router IDs are elected. So first thing I'll do is change the priority of router one back to one. On router two, let's confirm the relationships. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Router one is a DR other. Router three is a DR other. Router four is a backup designated router. And the local router is a designated router. In the output here, we can see that router four is the backup designated router. Router three and router one are DR others. So let's see what happens when we shut down interfaces on the switch. So shut down a range of interfaces, gigabit zero to three. So I've shut those interfaces down on router one, show IP OSPF neighbor. Now it may take it a while in GNS3 to realize that the interfaces have gone down. So what I'm gonna do at this point is pause the video and what we should see is that these states change. So after a while, the dead timer expires for the neighbor relationships. Previously, we had these neighbor relationships and now those neighbor relationships have disappeared. The only neighbor relationship that router one has is to router four using this ethernet link. So to ensure that it doesn't get confusing, I'll shut that link down as well. So we have no OSPF neighbor relationships on router one at all. The switch has all of its interfaces shut down once again. So let's have a look on router two, show IP OSPF neighbor, no neighbor relationships on router two. Router three, show IP OSPF neighbor, no neighbor relationships. Router four, show IP OSPF neighbor. It only has a neighbor relationship on the serial interface, not on the ethernet interface. So router four has a neighbor relationship to router five, but no other neighbor relationships. So on the switch, no shut. We've enabled all the interfaces on the switch. So on router one, after a period of time, we should see that neighbor relationships are formed we can do a ping to check if the interfaces have come up. Interfaces are starting to come up on the switch. Pings are now succeeding. And now we see neighbor relationships. Three neighbor relationships have been formed on router one, so show IP OSPF neighbor. Router one has a two-way relationship to router two. Router four has become the designated router and router three has become the backup designated router. The reason why router four became the designated router is because it has the highest IP address on any physical interface. This interface has an IP address of 10111. This interface on router two is 10.1.1.2. This interface on router three is 10.1.1.3. This interface on router four is 10.1.1.4, but in addition, it has an IP address on the serial interface of 10.1.2.1. So because it has the highest IP address of any physical interface, it becomes the DR with this IP address. The reason why it didn't use this IP address is because this interface was added after the OSPF process had run. So the router ID had already been selected. These two interfaces were up when OSPF started. This interface wasn't up when OSPF was started. So the router ID that was chosen was 10.1.2.1. So that proves that the router with the highest 
IP address of any physical interface will become the designated router on a segment when all the devices come up. Let's see if we can change that by manipulating priorities. I hope you found the video useful. If you enjoyed it, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.